All right, guys, we're on the road up to Connecticut. We're going to bring you another episode of Unlocking Your Inner Strength, me and BK. So this is a kind of a vision coming to fruition, reality. So we'll, we'll be talking about that and see what else comes up on the way up there. So I, let's start there, BK, right? How long ago did we talk about this? Yeah, I mean, the original thought was... The conversation was March of uh, 2020, right before uh, COVID. <laughs> yeah, literally. In uh, in Orlando, Disney Springs, Florida, and uh, we thought about the Fast to Feast retreat, and we thought about uh, going on tour and bringing awareness um, to fasting and trying to get these gym owners to um, to realize the power behind fasting and how, what it does within the culture and the community of their gym. Um, and then for you to eventually certify these, these coaches. So, yeah. you know, 20, you know, what, what is it? 23. So, yeah, 23. Uh, yeah. So that's, yeah, we just passed the almost three and a half, year, three and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. So it's coming up on, you know, and it sometimes it takes, that long, you know, and you, you stayed focused on it. You know, we talk about it, we chat about it. it came out last December. Yep. Did a seminar at the gym, our gym, which is good. You know, I can see this, the world's greatest fasting seminar. You know, being nationwide, man, being all over the place. Absolutely. You're coming to a, a theater near you type shit. Yeah. We already have a lot of momentum going where gym owners are that we know we we know uh, multiple gym owners uh, but they know something's going on so it's cool it's cool to get that momentum and that that word of mouth it is man and then you see you kind of see because the fasting right it's just a self-development tool you know it's the initial thing for weight loss you know, it's phenomenal for all the physiological stuff, but it's really just a self-development tool when you break it down once you really grasp it. So then, you know, us talking about mindset and all that can benefit people, because that, that's where all the transformation takes place. You know, people aren't given this, uh, a lot of people never figure out how to use their, their mind efficiently or to, to, ha to have the correct thoughts and questions of themselves and the, the inner dialogue you know, they're not given that operating manual. I think that's really what we're going to be giving people. Because if you can master the fasting, that means you've started to master the inner dialogue, the self-talk. Yeah, you're starting to realize that we're just emotional beings. Yeah. Not just, but that's what we are, is emotional beings. And if we can control the emotions, we can control our thoughts and um, working out is is a great tool, but it's not the only tool that you can use. You know, I think it's it's one, it's like an escape for a lot of people. But then you got another 23 hours of the day that you're not in a gym atmosphere, that you don't have your headphones on, or you know, your workout buddy with you. It's you know, 90 percent of the world's population, their perception is off, their reframing is off. Yeah. So. Being said that, you know, it's hard to get outside of the uh, the norm, outside of the box, grow, um, adapt. It is, man. It, it's the self-perception. You know, I think a great question people can ask themselves, you know, for reflecting is, is what am I not seeing? Or you ask people, like I ask you questions about myself, right? People can see you differently. You know, we get stuck inside our head, our own mind, and we get to get on these tracks. Like we were talking about before, the story that you're telling yourself, anybody, what is that story? And, and you realizing that you can change that story at any time, but you got to be, what you were just talking about before, persistent with that. Like the energy, like if you, you can't just do it for a little bit, because it's not a habit yet, right? That thought pattern. So your old habit, your old pattern is going to come back online. And then you're going to say, well, why didn't this work? Or it worked for a little bit. That why did it stop? Because you stopped. You stopped bringing the focus to it. Yeah, it's not natural. Yeah. The the brain was wasn't meant to thrive. It was meant to well, it, you it can be utilized to thrive, but yeah. it was meant to survive. Yeah. If that's the first and foremost 
aspect of what the brain does, the last thing you're going to want to do is start questioning yourself, well, how can I find solutions? It's like, no, that's, you know, it's a lot easier to play the victim role. That's na more natural, right? Way to blame more others and, you know, not not saying like you can't, you know, talk, talk about things, but to pout to other people, um, it's just different. It's just a different frame. And it, it's practice because it, it, I still revert back to, you know, where there's victim roles and, you know, it's just always practice. It, it, you can't stop if you're trying to go against, it's like going against genetics, going against like what we were put on earth to do. It is, you know, that negative, the scanning for the negative, being the Velcro for the negative. You know, I think when people begin to change, you know, so not transform yet, the transformation is permanent. To have that focus, the drive, the visualization, but they don't realize, and this happens to me, right? You don't realize there's a lag effect between what you visualize, that new person you want to become, and then the results actually showing up. So you might not see it for a little bit, and then you stop doing the, the inner work, and then results show up, and you can't, you're like, well, how did, how did that happen? So there's a lot of people, right, it's that roller coaster. Because it starts, stops, start, I don't see it right away. Well, it's like if you just stay, like you said before, with just the inner energy locked in on what you're doing, and recommit to it, and then that comes down to, I think, a question of focus. You know, there, what are, not that you can't focus on more than one thing, obviously, in your life, at any time, but you have to have dedicated time. You can't be focused on everything all the time, or otherwise it's just a fragmented yeah, it's laser. Tough. Yeah. I think these, the gyms that we go to, and you create the culture for these gyms to, you know, it's, it's helping better lives ultimately. And if they can create a stronger culture, then those people go out and create a stronger culture for their families and their friends and, now everybody's thinking outside the box. It's just a different way to think. Yeah. You know, the best of the best think this way. The 1% consistently think this way, you know, and, uh, but you get tied down. There's so many things that go on and I'll talk about that today is, you know, it's, e it's easy not to perceptualize life always grand because you have you're aging with that comes responsibilities with that comes stress yeah. with that comes emotions and then you're dealing with other people's emotions trying to navigate through life with you know your spouse your kids your co-workers your friends you know so it's easy especially if if they're not always thinking you know to perceptualize things different how is this good for me instead of why this shit sucks yeah right like that's so easy for someone to say like it's crazy like i got i got a really good friend and every time he talks to me i'm like damn dude do you ever say anything other than christmas stories like he'll be like did you hear like 12 people got killed did you hear this happened did you hear this girl got kidnapped i'm like brother like no i didn't hear that shit man like <laughs> it is man people people love the drama too people are addicted to it <clears throat> And it is though that reframe you can uh, find the great in anything that's great about this problem and realizing that instead of when chaos hits it's easy to revert because you know chaos is going to hit sometimes it's higher sometimes it's lower the chaos could be other people's emotions like we're saying like when colty was in the hospital friday you know well i had this planned well guess what god had something different planned you know, and how you're going to deal with it. What's that inner dialogue? But it, it, and you can you can put stuff in perspective real quick too. You know what's actually important when you boil it down. What's an what's an ideal client for you right now? Who's what's a what's the avatar for you right now and what you're doing? You know, it's funny, man. I was actually thinking about this today. It's an out of shape version of me. There you go. Or even someone like me, because I'm just in constant pursuit of knowledge and teachers. You know, so it's that person that's, that, that I can relate more to fathers, right? So it's that father that wants to get better. You know, they, they, they love learning. 
but they're they're missing something, right? And a lot of times it, it starts with their health and their fitness. You know, they're lacking in that. They're not making the time. They think they don't have the time. They tell themselves that story. They tell story. themselves, man, because they're providing for the family. They're doing their nine to five. They might be coaching. You know, some and some of these dudes are good fathers, but they can be better, right? Like I, if if you're not in shape as a father, it, you're letting your family down. Like I can't look at it any other way. Yeah. Because when chaos, you know how we live now, right? And this craziness since since COVID. You don't know what's coming. You know there is stuff. There's more stuff coming down the pike. But let's say the apocalypse happens, right? What are you going to do as a father if you're not physically in the best shape you could be in? And f- and let's just say, forget all about an apocalypse, because people could take that and be like, well, there's never going to be an apocalypse, right? But what if just shit hits the fan in a fucking parking lot? That how, yeah. I mean, how simple is it? Is you know, what people you get do? robbed all the time. Yeah. You know, where we come from, it's it's second nature sometimes to have to look over your back and to be prepared and aware of your surroundings. It's different. Yeah. So what happens when, you know, you get questioned, you get stuck up, you get, you know, your kid gets grabbed. What are you going to do? I think that might be something that can open some eyes up for yeah. the father's but they got to tell themselves the story that they, they want to work out. They need to work out. If if they don't, they don't change the story. They'll always be the victim. They'll always tell their wife, "This is why I can't do it. My back hurts. This hurts. I'm an I'm a aging athlete or whatever." It's like, well, are you really though? You know. So it's it is. It's yeah. that storyline. And if you can probably get somebody that's looking to be better, it's going to be a perfect fit for you. You know, it's like how it do is. you how do you draw somebody out of their their zone of comfort? You know, they it, can't be happy. You see, I mean, whenever I, I travel, it's like how do you even fit? You barely even fit down this aisle, and this isn't shaming. This is just being honest. Like, how do you fit down the aisle? How do you how do you get in these chairs? How do you get out of these chairs? You know, it's these seats. And I think you know. It, some people need to be shamed, man, because shame is the lowest, one of the lowest vibrational energies. You know, they have to feel that pain. Like as a father, if you're not physically able to protect your family, like to, you got to come up with your definition as a man. Even if you're not a father, what there is you your... Go. I'll what, take that. It's hard yeah. for me to put put shame on somebody just my, I don't know, unless they've, you know disrespected well, me or something. It's, it's not, tough. It's, it's not tough. putting shame on somebody. It's making them realize the shame they feel for themselves yeah true look in the mirror when you look at yourself when your wife if you're married looks at you or your kids look at you are they proud of the way you physically look because that's a manifestation of what's going on inside of you and if you're ashamed to take your shirt off you have to because the pain is the only thing that's going to we know this right it's the only thing that's going to transform somebody is the pain true going after I want a six pack well that's not really what you want yeah, true. It's getting away from... So it's not us being like, you suck. It's, hey, how do you actually feel? Right? Like when, and I pay attention to words just like you. Like when people say they feel guilty, I'm like, stop saying that. Yeah. That's like such a low-level emotion. Yeah. Recognize it and start changing that track. And, and with these guys, if they're feeling shame, and only they know if they are, they have to use that as fuel. But if right. they're not happy, they're, they're drugged. That's what, what I always think about. It. They're just staying drugged up on food. You know, this makes me feel better. I'm just going to stay in this cycle. And then once you rise above that, you like elevate yourself, like any drug, it no longer... Like, if you elevate yourself above uh, whatever the drug is, man, let's say it's alcohol, right? Like somebody that that's, relies on that. Once you elevate yourself above that, at some point, when you're below it, it makes you feel good because it's at a higher frequency than you are. You elevate yourself above it, all of a sudden you have it, and you're like, yeah, I could just have one or two. Well, I can enjoy it, but I don't need it. And sometimes it might actually make you feel sick once you're above it, because it's a lower frequency. So you gotta use these frequencies, these guys, you know, getting back to the, the ideal person. It, it, it's that 
they got to know that they can transform because a lot of these 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 guys have in their head too just that story they see themselves as a fat guy like that's their identity since they're young a lot of these guys so you have almost different ones you have the one that's been like that their whole life and that's all they know and they're they they've tried other stuff and they've failed and they so they have they have missed the distrust of fitness you know or nutrition so you have that person then you have the guy that was an athlete that was in shape at some point that just wants to get better you know they want to get back to that and, and they know that hey you know i always go back man like to, it's a real simple test man is your wife attracted to you and, and that's on multiple levels physically spiritually emotionally intellectually a lot of guys trick themselves and think they are. Or they think, oh, this is just the way it's supposed to be. We've been married for 10 years, 20 years. It's not supposed to be like that anymore. It's like it is supposed to be. You just let yourself go. You know, it's helping. It's got to feel good because Christian is a client. That's the, the person we're going to for all the listeners. We're going to a gym, and Christian is one of Kyle's clients. And how much did he lose? He lost like 65 in like three months. 65 pounds in three months and he owns a gym and i'm sure one of the conversations you had with him was how the fuck are you overweight trying to lead Others. a culture to lose weight right i mean that's got to be a that's got to be something that's brought to his attention and so now he's down 60 something pounds and we're going out there to help create even a stronger community yeah uh for him that's got to feel good for you yeah no it feels great man you know it's i think it's a perfect spot for us to really start you know he's been living the lifestyle it, it's funny too right like I, you know we're infusing energy that's really what we're going to be doing on these speaking engagements and uh that's all people just like the phone right it needs energy sometimes you gotta plug it in yeah like a lot of people know oh yeah what to do they just need that energy again I, I, you know Christian this is probably a month I don't know maybe a, a month and a half ago he had called me there was some stuff going on you know that um, he was getting concerned about without getting into too many details what other people were thinking I said dude stop with that like you don't catch yourself with that thought it doesn't matter what the other people think it makes no difference don't worry about doing this because it might appear to, don't worry about that and then with that stress from that situation that he was perceiving knocked him off course with his fasting yeah because he had sent me a picture like that week of his in of his measurements i'm like took his weights back up not all the way up but yeah. it was up like 20 it was like 225 i'm like wasn't this dude just like 185, 195? And he had messaged me earlier in the week, said, yeah, I really want to get to like 185, 190, 195. I'm like, we were there. So on the phone, after we dealt with the stress situation, he said, all right, let, let me talk about my plan. What should I be doing? I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I opened up the window, you know. I go, what does that mean? Because I knew he was trying to dance around it, yeah. right? Because you... you, you you know, if you're coaching, if, if you're a client of somebody, the coach has to hold that mirror in front of you. So then he said, oh, you know, I said, all right, so you know exactly what to do. You just got to go back to what you were doing, man. <laughs> you know, this, this is how it works. You got to commit to that. So my point with that is sometimes people just need to tap back into the energy source when they start losing their way. We, I, th I think we all know, especially on the inner level, we know what we need to know. Yeah. Right, it's there. Why don't you act on it? Why don't you do it? And if you didn't know what you, you that's where you find somebody that knows. You know, you, you figure out the skill set, mindset, or habit you need to form, and success leaves clues, right? You just gotta copy somebody else that did it, find a mentor, find a coach, and you go forward. Start living it and then start coaching it yourself. That's huge. Start man. with your, your family, Start with your kids. Start teaching. Start holding somebody accountable with by your actions, not just your words. Just while you're with your actions, 
and you know that I think really builds a strong culture especially within a gym if you have people that are living the lifestyle and it's not just through words they you can actually physically see it them working out them reading writing articulating their thoughts doing things for self-development purposes because like you taught me a long time ago is you'll never outperform your own level of self-development they won't yeah and that's stuck with me for so long it's like well the fasting was never for me for weight loss the fasting was for energy because i got sick and then i nerded out on it because of longevity yeah you know it was more like holy shit like especially when 20 when covid hit i felt like i had armor on me yeah you know my perception was that Bounce my perception yeah. was i'm i'm rejuvenating blood cells I'm making sure my immune system is is bulletproof, and now it's just became part of a it's a it's a habit of self development of well if I'm hungry I'm, I'm emotional right now because I know what is it we can last ten days we have enough nutrients in our bodies at least just in theory at just least. in theory Jesus yeah. Christ did forty days in four yeah. different Bibles you know like in theory. At least I, there's not many people that can go at least 30 days without eating yeah so it's no question um i don't know when we do these long fasts it's not like we we don't do anything remember we met a guy a while back and they're oh, yeah. like we're i'm doing a 48 hour fast so i'm just gonna yeah. chill on the couch for 40 we're like what yeah. the fuck would you do what that for why are you wasting <laughs> yeah. you're wasting the fast brother yeah. like you need to be going out doing stuff being creative fucking taking control of your life within those yeah. 48 hours why would that is the wrong picture to be painting it is painted man. right like that's the story he was actually telling himself we were looking at it at, at it, him like like am i gonna say it or are you gonna say it? like how are <laughs> like so like, i can't wait like i'm just gonna zone out you know i got my water ready to stay inside you know for i'm gonna days. shut the blinds like uh, what <laughs> and, and you think about that approach it's like if that's your approach to it, how long are you actually going to con continually do this for? You're not going to form a habit around that if it's taking life away from you. Right? Yeah, but, but somewhere yeah. down the chutes and ladders, that's what he was taught that's or told. told. And, you know, because fasting hasn't, it's like, okay, it, it, it's been around forever, right? Most cultures, most religions outside the Western world do it. But yeah. the West, and then all of a sudden it gets to the Western world and, it's not like it came here, but then you have all these points of views on it. And it's like, well, I heard this. Well, I heard this. It's like, well, what about live application? Like, why yeah, don't you yeah. do it? You're like, that's the whole, I guess I'm getting all excited about it because the, yeah, you, the whole point is you are taking control of your life by not eating because of your emotions and your stress. Therefore, you should apply it. Does it work for you? Yes or no? Right? Like... It is, man. It, it, that's the thing that, it, especially in, uh, well, it's all, all life, but especially in fitness, man, and you see it a lot on social media, people want to give their input, let's say, on fasting, right? They want to trash what we do and say, have you actually tried it? No. Then how can you intelligently speak on it? Well, because, because <laughs> theoretically, theoretically, yeah. theoretically, this is how the body works. It's like, yeah. do you know, like, medicine is theory right it's like all theory, it's all in theory and chloe my my daughter's um mom's husband is the best neurosurgeon in the chicagoland area i mean he is sought out all over the world and in theory you're supposed to do this and we talk about it all the time i call him the wolf from like pulp fiction the <laughs> cleanup guy yeah like they go to him to clean up other and he's like no 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 you because he's seen it so much and he cares about what he does, he's passionate about it, he defines odds all the time. Uh, yeah. It's his way. This is, in theory, it's like this, but hey, don't forget about this artery or this vein or this. This is usually what happens. Yeah, because he's, he's, he's developed the direct knowledge. That, that to me is the highest level. Yeah. The knowledge is great, but then you gotta apply it. You apply it, you develop direct knowledge, which is the same thing. It's a synonym for wisdom. And, and you and I have tried to, uh, who knows how many different eating types or diets. And that's why I'm like, this is, now I'm open to whatever, man. Somebody, 
people ask me about like these breath areas. I'm like, I don't know enough about it to speak on it. I'm like, but maybe there's something there. Maybe somebody will convince me one day that you just need oxygen to live. And then I'll be like, what the hell were we doing eating? Yeah. You know, yeah. but I'm open to that idea. But right now I'm like, this is the best thing there is. I've tried all the other stuff. You know, I've tried pretty much everything out there. And I speak from experience, but you get, you get these people, man, they got to try it. And it's a theory, but this is also what we've been intentionally, you know, most people don't realize that through education. We're told a narrative to believe for many reasons that people never question. It's just repeated. It's repeated down the line. And then, but it's like the telephone game. It yeah. gets in, the, by the second person, it's it's already... Distorted. The story is already distorted. It's backwards. It's upside down. And by the time it gets, it's like in your client's hand, well, I heard of this. It's like, well, who is they, first off? like. But I can see, you know... I don't know where the world kind of shifted on the whole fitness level. It's like, hey, if you're going out there and it's working for you, do it. Do your thing, man. Exactly. Keep like we don't need a gangbang on like what fitness style works best, like you know, or what nutrition. It's if it's working, do it. If it's not, you're probably most people are emotionally eating. Yeah. That's just if we're the only species that eats because of our emotions. Yes. Just think about it. What emotion doesn't cause you to go to your cabinet or you to go to your refrigerator you happy you sad what about your board when you're bored that's what's cool about fasting for me when i first get somebody on it is it puts them in almost like it puts them in check how many times they wanted to go to the refrigerator you start realizing they get exposed and once you're exposed you can't unexpose yourself that's what's crazy it's like Oh, man, I wanted to go to the fridge so many times just to, and I wasn't even hungry. So, yep. It's it. Yeah, you start, and that's why I was saying the self-development of fasting. You start recognizing these things that are always there on the background. They're always running. And that, you brought up a great point, too. This is what, for you and I, like I said, this is what has worked for me, you know, and my clients. So, like you said, if what you're doing is working and you enjoy it, keep doing it. And that's another thing people miss is, okay, this might be working on the surface, but they're miserable doing it. Like when I was competing, I would, you know, literally have Tupperware. Like I would eat out of Tupperware. If I went out to eat, I had to order a certain amount of calories. Like it was miserable. And I learned a lot of discipline with it. I'm like, that's why to me, I, I created the Panda selfishly off everything I struggle with, with eating. I love to eat. So I'd say, okay, how do I do that? How do I have the freedom of a cheat meal or a cheat day within there? That would completely mess me up. You know, stuff because I, I love to eat, right? So it's like, okay, the feast. Like, we're going to feast tonight after a presentation. And you know how we eat. It's a fit. It's like, I, I get to do that without... And it's earned. It's earned. And it, it's exactly. It's earned on many levels. And then you also bring down the spiritual component to it where it's, man, I'm so grateful for each meal now. You know, I don't take it for granted. I'm much more present. I pray before each meal. Where before it was like going back in the day, man, eat five, six times, whatever. It's mindless eating. Thinking it's always going to be available. But it might not. Yeah, you talk about like the last of the Mohicans or some sort of like when the shit hits the fan, what happens then? Are you going to be able to let your family eat while you fast? until the portions are right or are you gonna you know are you stealing off your kids fucking yeah. you know plates and it's a it's a it's a great analogy too man i always think about it again especially the times we're living well foods food prices all this stuff man chaos you know whatever you, it's going on around the world let's say there is nuclear war whatever and you have to go you have no choice but do not eat for periods of days. If you haven't been exposed to that, most people are gonna panic because they've, they've been led to believe, uh, you know, hey, I'm gonna give you're gonna perish. Up. You're gonna die. You're gonna get weak. Yeah. Right? It's like, no, no, no. We, we reframed the brain that yeah. it's like, no, 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 man. Actually, for every day that I go, I'm gonna get stronger. Yeah. I'm gonna get better. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna come out of the cave and I'm gonna think of a better solution to go out and capture, right? Like yeah. that's, that's instilled within our brain. You can't, 
deny the fact that they, you know back in the day when we were primal when we didn't capture what we set out to hunt we didn't go back to the cave and die we actually came out more rejuvenated right we, yeah. we found solutions a lot easier yeah you get that dopamine spike too right could you imagine our family back in the day i mean just living you know you're talking about because we kind of have the same weather here in chicago you're talking about oh, yeah. like february march even you know i'm not even talking about the cold cold i'm talking about the cold and wet yeah. you know being outside and shit can you imagine what they had to endure like how tough those fuckers were yeah and then to be here you know anybody you've had to come from some tough people some tough genetics to have survived a lot of gene lines got wiped out right for one reason or another they couldn't withstand it they didn't have the skill set and that should be you know just saying it that should give us all a boost of confidence absolutely man wear your last name proud the lineage that where you came from yeah you know that that last name means something to a lot of people yeah yeah well, we just live in an age now where it's easy the comfort of and the ease of the age that we live in it, it's not something many people think about anymore i think the lineage you know just, hey you know my grandfather did this or my great-grandfather was this they were known for this and you gotta always think about it, like how is our great grandkids or great grandkids gonna are, are they going to remember us and if so how are they going to speak about us if your great grandkids are still talking about you to me that's like man that was a hell of a life you know how many people actually even know what their great grandparents names were yeah for real yeah, I think about my grandparents, and the kids still talk about them, my kids. I'm like, that man, I'm so blessed that they were able to have that experience. But I know me and Devin will continue, you know, my brothers, we talk about my grandparents. They left such an impact. So now our kids will hear that. So then it's like, man, that was a great life. If they, like, that's a rich life to me. You know, my grandparents, but they, and they were always happy. You, know, you never saw them upset. And, uh, they got they did all the stuff they wanted to do in life you know they they were simple it's like man that's true wealth man like you know and, and pretty much until they died past they had their fitness you know the leo he went all the way up i mean he died within like three days when they put him in the hospital with covid but up until that point completely healthy strong sharp-minded always learning still reading painting writing he was fasting like he was so happy about the panda diet he would tell everybody about it he was doing it <laughs> he'd go like 16 20 hours and uh he'd walk around the house you know get his laps in it's like the easiest way to build confidence within somebody you know yeah i mean it's hard because it's habitual you know we've been eating three four times a meal since we were babies and the cool thing is, though, you can, the difference between fasting and, okay, so you go on a regular diet, and there's this lag effect where you might lose weight, you might not. Again, you've been burned so many times, it depends how damaged your metabolism is, but let's say you wanted to lose that five pounds. There's a lag effect. The first time you do a 48-hour fast, you have gratification immediately, regardless of the, what, what happens on the scale, because you're like, man, I controlled that. I was able to do that. It's a completely different shift. And I remember the first time I did a 48, I'm like, it's kind of weird, man. Like, not knowing what's going to happen, but then realizing that people do this, have done this forever. It, but it, it was kind of surreal being like, man, there's people that do this all the time. Maybe because they don't have access to food. So it was kind of surreal, and it was very empowering, too. Like, I did it. I felt fine. It was great, you know. It, and I think that's a big difference with fasting versus, you know, it's that immediate result you get of, of the self-mastery. Yeah, when you get confidence, the, yeah. the, fat, the storage of fat hormone goes way down. The cortisol levels go down. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of times when people are eating out of Tupperware, let's say they're already stressed, they're usually eating it driving somewhere. Yeah rushing around 
and it's like, is there any nutrients actually going anywhere? Yeah, um, shut them into the fat cell, man. Yeah, sugar staying elevated. Stress is tough, man. You can't really get outside of that, you know. And if you're on a specific diet, you know, it's the odds. Are, the odds are against you, anyways, Way just as a human being. Just, just from a logistical. Yeah, like that's one of the biggest things I realized when, when I, cause I had started fasting at 14. Right after, a couple months after, I really learned the mind mapping from Dax. So I was already into the science of fasting and all that, but he had said something with his hormones based, right? If you can't enjoy the meal, don't eat the meal. So how, like you're saying, how often can people eat? Yeah, I remember, I remember that. It's I remember huge. you saying that. It was, it's it so stuck with me so much. Like, it's so simple. It makes so, it makes so much sense. Yeah. That we as humans have just completely took it to a whole nother level of complexity. Yeah. We have, man. It's like, can you, in the middle of a stressful commute or a busy work day, do you actually, like, are you enjoying that meal? No. For most people. So just skip it. You know, and then you are, because you, you're eating along with the, the, the biological rhythm of the body. But again, this is a, everybody's taught the, the outside in approach control the quantity, change the quantity on the scale. But it's the inside-out approach, okay? Can I enjoy this? Am I enjoying the process? Shift mentally, and that's why a lot of people get bariatric. Most people, it doesn't work, because they don't fix the issue, the mindset, the psychology. So they just eat themselves right through it. Well, but you can't eat as much, it doesn't matter. It's all about the hormones. It's good stuff, man, it's, I'm excited. It's good a little warm up for us guys on the way up to uh, Christians. We're gonna be there hour fifteen. Anything else you want to finish with? No, man. I appreciate remind, anybody listening. Remind people where they can find you, where yeah. they can find me, find you, and, and what, what they can, uh, you know, where they can find it. I'll be where I be. That's it. <laughs> Look for him. Like, where's I'll Waldo? I'll be where I be, man. <laughs> Where's Waldo, man? You don't want to look for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned, guys. Leave a review for us. Share it. Uh, appreciate you guys. We'll be back next week with another episode. Peace.